I did not commit the crimes of which I am unfairly and arbitrarily accused, she said, while denying she illegally manipulated the budget to hide deficits. To Dilma Rousseff, the spectacle of an impeachment trial now in its fourth day is nothing more than an attempted coup d'etat. And while she stands accused of crimes against the state, many of those behind the impeachment, including interim president Michelle Temer, have themselves been accused of corruption. Later, we'll talk with several experts about what Rousseff's expected impeachment means for Brazil and, of course, beyond. But we begin with CCTV's Paulo Cabral in the country's capital of Brasilia, who is burning the midnight oil, I can tell you. And Paulo, take us inside the Brazilian Senate as President Rousseff testified on Monday. What was it like? Must have been a lot of energy. And did she change any minds and save her presidency? Well, look, I can tell you that the appearance of President Rousseff in the Parliament and the Senate was possibly the most anticipated moment in those final stages of the impeachment process, possibly even more than the votes itself, because uh, since the Senate decided to try uh, President Rousseff in May and then she was suspended, there's never been uh, much doubt here in Brazil that she was heading for a defeat, and this is still uh, the perception that she's going to be defeated, defeated in this impeachment vote. But now, what nobody knew was, first, if Dilma Rousseff would be coming in person to the Senate to offer her defense or if you just send a lawyer and what would be the atmosphere there so yes she did come and then there were speculations as to what would be a, a confrontation between a president with a strong personality like Dilma Rousseff and, and the senators that wanted her out of power in the end uh, it was tense of course but the atmosphere remained respectful in the question and answer Dilma Rousseff spoke for 15 hours after her initial statement and, and look both the lies of Dilma Rousseff and even independent commentators have been saying that it was one of her best speeches uh, so far. She's not known for being a great speaker, but she was uh, quite clear and confident and defiant when delivering that speech. But regardless of all this, it's not been seen as something that would really change anything regarding the outcome. Actually, uh, allies Rousseff uh, the, the allies of Rousseff are now fighting for one or two votes, something just to look a bit better, mm. but there's not much hope that anything can change significantly in these last moments. So, Paolo, what happens after this uh, chapter is closed, after Wednesday's vote, assuming Rousseff is removed? Does Michel Temer then take over? And how long before new elections as well? Well, and, and you've seen all the twists and turns over in Brazil over the last month, the impeachment process, Lula and all that. So it's quite hard here in Brazil to, to say what comes next. You know, a lot of unpredictability. But what you can say is that then, yes, Michel Temer, the interim president, is likely to be confirmed as the president until the 2018 elections. That's how long Dilma's, Dilma Rousseff's term uh, should last. The question now is whether this impeachment will be enough to sort Brazil's deep political crisis. It's not going to be an easy task for Michel Temer anyway. You know, he managed to gather a quite strong support base to get the impeachment passed. But now there is question on how much the support base will really support his government. If you talk to the uh, Rousseff supporters, to many people in Brazil's left-wing camp, they say that will make everything to make it harder for Michel Temer. And, you know, there is also the car wash corruption probe that's mm. still going here in Brazil. And it actually got quite close to interim President Michel Temer in uh, past months. So it's another of the unknowns here in Brazil is how much the car wash corruption probe could also hit this government that is about to be installed. Thanks, Paolo. You've got a lot more work to do. You're not going to bed, I can tell. That's CCV's Paolo Corral reporting from Brasilia. So we've got a lot to un, uh, uh, unpack here. Let me introduce, of course, uh, our panel. Uh, first of all, joining us from Sao Paulo to talk about all this is Maria Ermina Almeida. Uh, she is a former political uh, science professor and dean at the University of Sao Paulo's Institute of International Relations. Uh, Rafael Saleh is a director of Brazil operations for Southern Pulse a strategic advisory firm. He joins us from Rio de Janeiro. And with us here in Washington is John Velasco. He focuses on Latin America as a senior vice president with the Albright Stonebridge Group, an international strategic consulting firm. And joining us from Berkeley, California, is Maria Luisa Mendonca. She teaches at the University of Rio de Janeiro and is the director of Brazil's Network for Social Justice and Human Rights. Let's start there uh, with you, Maria Luisa. You know, there's a trial going on for the accused crime of a crime of responsibility, which sounds a little bit complicated, but even Dilma Rousseff's accusers say basically she's on trial because of what's been happening to Brazil economically as well. Do you agree with that? 
Yes, exactly. Uh, she did not commit any crime. She was very clear. Her lawyers were very clear. And uh, everybody knows, the opposition senators know that uh, what they are doing is a parliamentary coup. Everybody knows this, this is very clear now. Uh, there is no charges against her. The public prosecutor in Brazil already cleared President Dilma Rousseff of all charges. And uh, in a presidential system, you cannot impeach a president just because there is an economic crisis or just because you don't like the president. That's why this is a coup. And I think it was very important that uh, she gave this speech yesterday. She was very clear. And uh, I think history will show that uh, this is a parliamentary coup. And this is a threat to democracy. If the impeachment is approved, it's uh, the, uh, what is going to be defeated is not Dilma Rousseff. She's going to be clear. Her history is very clear. I think that uh, we're going to see a, a defeat of democracy in Brazil. And the senators in favor of the impeachment will have to pay a very uh, strong price uh, to history, because they would be known as the ones that uh, supported a parliamentary coup okay. in okay. Brazil against a democracy. OK, let's go to Rafael in Rio, uh, another Brazilian voice here. Uh, we just heard uh, Maria Luisa say it's definitely a coup. Uh, is it a rule of law? Is it politics? Or is it payback for the biggest recession we've seen in decades in Brazil? Um, it's definitely politics and payback at the same time. Um, the question of did she commit a crime of responsibility, it, it, the answer to that question is, the famous answer that every law student goes f goes through on their first day of school, which is it depends. And in this case, <laughs> it depends on which side you're on. Both, both sides can argue whether she committed a crime of responsibility or not. The question that remains is that this is an institutional process that depends on politics. And without the recession that Brazil was going through, um, it would be politically inviolable to depose um, Dilma Rousseff. Um, the recession allowed the opposition garner enough popular support or lack or or actually to, to be more more precise for Dilma to lose enough popular support that the opposition could comfortably go after her um, that being said it's also in a small in small terms payback for how Dilma treated other politicians during her five to six years in office um, so it, it's a it's a mixture of all things um, but I would like to comment that while Brazilian democracy is not itself at risk here, um, we will have elections in 2018. We will have elections on the first weekend of October. What is at risk here is, is, is the level of political instability in Brazil where any other president in the future can be deposed um, following Dilma Rousseff's example as soon as he or she loses enough political support and the country is in enough of a, a, a economic hole. Um, that is, th this is setting an example for the future that not only politicians but uh, citizens and markets should pay attention to. Uh, let's go to uh, Maria Amina um, in Sao Paulo. Um, Temer's coming in in the next 24 hours, it looks like. Um, even though he was vice president under Rousseff, very much more right wing. He's already uh, talked about austerity, cut the number of ministries, going to uh, redistribute the budget. This is a very big change. Is this something? that Brazil is ready for? Uh, yes, I think. I think that uh, there are fiscal constraints, and fiscal adjustment is a must here now in Brazil. The issue in the next uh, months will be of what kind of adjustment, what kind of economic adjustment will be put in place. And then there's a lot of discussion. Who will pay the price uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the adjustment? And then I think the different forces will press uh, to uh, try to, uh, to protect what they have. Uh, but I think that some kind of uh, economic adjustment will be necessary. And uh, well, 
uh, Dilma Rousseff knew that and tried to do it in the, the first part of her, of her yeah. government in, in fact, 2015. That's right. In fact, Joel, I want to bring you in here because she did actually cut taxes for businesses, stuff like mm -hmm. that, something she says regretting, as well as uh, appointing Vema, uh, Tema, his, uh, her, her vice president. Uh, what's he got to do, though? Because obviously we're, we're seeing the economy 3.3%. Uh, expected to contract this year. It was a bit more uh, last year. And he's jumping on a plane as soon as he gets sworn in, we were just saying before the show, to Hangzhou for the G20. Absolutely. So he's really going to be in center stage here. Yeah, he's going to be on center stage and he needs to help uh, rebuild this country. Whether he believes, uh, whether we believe that he came to power in democratic means or not, uh, my view is that a part of democracy is part of the impeachment, and the impeachment is very much a political process. Most likely, by the t uh, within the next 24 hours, he'll have more than two-thirds of the vote. But and does, does he have a mandate? Well, uh, yes. Because it is a political process, not an electoral one, as he, Brazil has. He, he's made it clear he's not running for re-election. Well, he or, may not be able to because well, of corruption, right? Question. Uh, but but he's not running, and he's got he needs about he's got about 18 months, really more like 12 months, to straighten out the economy. And the first thing he's going to try to do is rein in government spending, you know, where where he's going to try to reduce the amount of money that is going from uh, that's earmarked already to certain uh, uh, spending that the government can't afford anymore. And he's also going to try to contain the growth of of government spending. Uh, those are going to be bitter pills. But if he can do that, and as he gets to the, the G20, build international consensus, build uh, uh, investor sentiment uh, for investing in, in uh, Brazil, then I think he can leave a, a legacy that you know, uh, the country is recovering. I won't think it will be have recovered. Uh, by the time he leaves office. This assumes, of course, that the political crisis does not continue when he's in office. I mean, Maria Luisa, let's talk about um, uh, uh, Operation Car Wash, which is not about cars and not about car washing at all. It's a, a, a kickback scandal involving the big uh, oil company Petrobras. This is still going on. The conspiracy theory or not was that Dilma Rousseff is being removed from office because she threatened uh, uh, to uncover the whole mess. Um, how much is that going to weigh on the proceedings when she's removed from office and afterwards too? Yes, exactly. There are transcripts of uh, recorded tapes showing that uh, there was a conspiracy to get rid of Dilma because uh, most politicians now appointed by Michel Temer are being investigated uh, for corruption charges. Temer himself cannot run for elections for eight years because uh, he was uh, he received illegal campaign contributions. And a third of the, the cabinet that he appointed uh, of the ministries are under investigations of uh, corruption. Uh, Eduardo Cunha, who initiated this whole process in the lower house, the impeachment process, also uh, is now accused then that is proved that he has illegal bank accounts in Switzerland. <coughs> so Joel you have the most to... corrupt politicians now in power, and the only one who is not being <laughs> accused of corruption is President Dilma Rousseff. Okay, let so Joel... I think, uh, th but yeah. the, let's, let's just get establish one thing. The impeachment process is not about corruption. It's about, uh, in essence, Enron, Enron style uh, accounting uh, gimmicks. I'm, let's, I'm, let's just agree I'm, on that. I'm, the corruption okay. is a very is, serious point. Is this a I'll, question from, from the, is, is this a question? Or, yeah. uh, I am going to be interrupted or? No, who, no, no, who no please, carry, please make who, your point. Who is talking? Please Who's make talking? your point. That I was, don't understand. That was, that was Joel Velasco, sorry, here in the studio. You can't see him, but, but go okay, on. Okay, please go. don't interrupt me, please. Okay. Go on, Maria Lusa. Yes, uh, well, it, this is a fact. Dilma Rousseff is not accused of any crimes. The public prosecutor, who is the main authority in the country, has cleared her of all charges and said that... Uh, the budget deficits was not her fault, and uh, what she did was a very common financial practice that previous administrations also did, and currently at least 16 state governors are using the same type of financial mechanisms to deal with the state budget. So that is no crime. So you could have all the procedures, but if you don't have a crime, then this is a coup, and this is going to be a very dangerous precedent for democracy in Brazil. 